Okay, it's good to be with you all again. And as we take these next few minutes to look at Galatians 3, let's pray that God will speak to us. Father, thank you that you do speak to us as we spend time in your word. We believe it's your living word. We believe you want to use it to touch us and encourage us. And I pray for every person taking time to listen to this, that they would know the blessing of you speaking to them personally by your Holy Spirit from these verses. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, it's good to start each day by giving thanks. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you, who belong to Christ Jesus. Um, and I encouraged you, as you were preparing for this, um, to think of people that had... Uh, blessed you when they became a Christian, that you were impressed with the changes that happened in their life. The question I asked was, do you know someone who changed in a good way when they became a Christian? What change in their thinking impressed you? And uh, think back to that person, and you might like to spend time thanking God for that person and the way that he blessed you through them. And think too of when you yourself maybe came to faith uh, of the changes that were in you and again thank God for what he did in you but before we go on uh, I thought it's good for us to acknowledge things that have happened in our fellowship those that we know who um, come together with us at church so uh, we heard the news this week of Jackie's aunt who had a hundred um, has uh, died, sadly died this year this week and also for Roy's mum and I wanted to share with you something that I use um, sometimes at funeral services. And it's a simple prayer for, that we can use for anybody uh, from any background, but as a way of giving thanks to God for that person and how they touched us. So thinking particularly of Jackie's aunt and thinking of Roy's mum, uh, I'd just like to share this prayer with you. And uh, it's a card that I often get people to write out themselves so that they make it their own prayer in doing that. And it says simply this, in loving memory to our Father God in heaven, you make each of us uniquely and you bless us through our relationship with others. I thank you for the privilege of knowing Jackie's aunt, Roy's mum. Thank you for their lives and the memories I have of her, in each case, enriching my life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Giving thanks, a good way to start. And we keep that theme as we go into Galatians, Galatians 3 verses 1 to 5. And let me read that to you now. Uh, Galatians chapter 3, starting verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain if indeed it was in vain. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Okay, uh, those are the verses that we've got. Now, you're, many of you will know that I spent some 20 years working uh, with other missionaries in Japan. And uh, the last 10 years when we were leading there, uh, we used to do a little award ceremony for the missionaries. And often that was designed to um, bring to attention uh, something that may have gone unnoticed. So one year uh, we presented an award to one of our Korean mission workers. And it was an award that we gave for the person who had installed Windows 10 the most times on their computer. Actually, you could call it quite a humbling award because this lady had spent more than 20 times reinstalling Windows 10 on her computer. Uh, why had she done that? Why had that happened? Well, her computer had got a virus. 
and desperate to uh, get rid of this virus in the simplest and cheapest way she could uh, she kept trying to wipe the whole system and reinstalling Windows 10 again on the computer. The problem was the virus was sat there the whole time and so each time she installed it the virus was still there. Uh, what do viruses do? Well, uh, they disrupt or take control of part of the operating system. So you've got the whole thing that's supposed to control the computer and how it works, the operating system, but the virus comes along separate to the operating system, but it disrupts the operating system and maybe it even takes control of part of the operating system. And we're used to talking about viruses at the moment um, because we've not only got the coronavirus going around, but we have people talking about the fact that there are all kinds of new variants of this virus that keep emerging that are slightly different to the previous one and slightly different in the way they affect people or how easily they are spread. But it's the same virus showing up in different forms, different variants. Okay, so same viral family, new variant, but same old problem. It's still the coronavirus. What did this mean for the Galatian church? With my misspelling in there. Well, Paul was a Jew. Paul, the guy who wrote uh, Galatians, wrote this letter to uh, Galatians, people living in Galatia. So Paul was a Jew who had sought salvation by works. So he had talked about himself being for, foremost amongst Jews as somebody who had worked very hard, known as very religious, very hard working, had spent lots of time studying the scriptures and who was fasting, who had concentrated on how to earn his salvation. And he'd also, because of that, been somebody who was keen to get rid of Christians because he saw them as having a corrupted understanding of how you relate to God. So that was him working hard for his salvation until he met God on the Damascus Road. And we've looked several times already as we've gone through Galatians about Paul's conversion experience when God spoke to him very directly and asked, why are you persecuting me? And Paul said, who are you? And he said, I am God. So Paul's life turned around at that time and he realized that he couldn't earn his salvation it was the gift of God and you hear him in these chapters again speaking about salvation coming through Jesus and in chapter 1 salvation only coming through Jesus not through our merit and in chapter 2 uh, the Galatians are saying well this gospel that Paul's preaching maybe it's different to the one that was being preached from Jerusalem and they queried him in his mission and his character and whether he really had authority so he's had to in chapter 1 re-establish what the gospel is and in chapter 2 re-establish his authority to be preaching that gospel. The crux of what's going on is uh, there are people saying okay well if we accept your argument that our salvation comes as a gift of God um, maybe it does in the beginning but then maybe the way we work it out requires us to add some different things on. So it becomes God's work plus your work equals justification. Not just God's gift to us, but God's work plus your work equals justification. And being specific about that, the Judaizers, 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 sorry, get it right. Uh, the Jewish people at that time, by the old traditional law, required chapter 2 verse 3 gets a mention circumcision required a special diet mentioned chapter 2 verses 12 and 13 and later on you'll hear it coming up again in chapter 4 verse 10 about keeping special feasts and holy days so they took the gospel that is the gift of God and then they started adding on a need to comply with different laws so it became a gospel plus works equals justification and this is what uh, Paul is fighting against in his argument here at the beginning of chapter 3. So Paul's not so subtle to the me message to the Galatians was what? 
you fools. Chapter 3, verse 3. Wasn't subtle in his words at all. You fools. Some might say, you idiots. And when we hear those words, uh, it's not very nice. It doesn't encourage us. And whatever the circumstances, it doesn't encourage us. Some people will say that to us as they totally dismiss us and believe that we have no value. Others, perhaps the people closest to us who love us the most, might sometimes even dare to say it. But they're not giving up on us. They're just highlighting how foolish we are at that moment. And I think that's where Paul comes from as he speaks to the Galatians. He is not subtle. He is not soft. He is not giving up on them. But what they are talking, to, from his point of view, is complete nonsense. We do not do a gospel plus. We do not do justification by a gospel plus works. If you think that, you're fools. Chapter 3, verse 3. You may remember last month when I was uh, sharing with you from Galatians, I talked about the gospel being a gospel to live by, not just to be saved by. And in a way, that distinction is what's coming through here again. There was some acceptance that maybe our first salvation, uh, what we're saved by, comes as God's gift. But the gospel that we live by involves works. And Paul's saying, no, if you believe that, you're fools. The gospel we live by is the same as the gospel we are saved by. It's by the power of God, it's the gift of God, it's his accomplishment, not our accomplishment. Okay, uh, I've shown it to you before, but a quick video for you that I think highlights how the gospel can sometimes be offensive to us in how simple it is and how it relies on how we relate to Jesus. Next file, please. Mm -hmm. Some lying, some stealing, and some acts of kindness here and there. I tried to live a good life. Well, let's see how good. This way. Next. Bio, please. Okay, I admit it. I did a lot of bad things. Yes, I see. But I've done good things too, you know, to offset the bad things. Like one time I cheated on a test, but then I cleaned up trash in the park. Mm-hmm. That should balance out, right? Let's find out. This way. That should have balanced out, right? It should have balanced out. Next. Bio, please. Impressive. Oh yeah, I devoted my entire life to make this world a better place. I dug wells in Africa, I donated blood every month, and I ran an orphanage in India. I mean, I just wish I could have done more. Mm-hmm. And is this your subscription? I only read the articles. I only read the articles. Next. My mom goes to church. I was baptized as a baby? Take American Express, right? Next. He's with me. That's what our salvation comes through. Our relationship with Jesus, our dependence on him, not what we have done. Also in preparation for today, I gave you uh, one other question. And that was this. Um, I asked you to think about stupid mistakes you've made and then you found that you made it again and again. And here's three common stupid mistakes that I think are common to most of us. The first one is this. Our gospel OS, our gospel operating system, gets infected with a gospel plus works virus variant. So we've all heard the explanation of how we become a Christian. We've seen the video. 
we've seen it's our relationship with Jesus and yet somehow our practical understanding gets changed and instead of working by that gospel uh, we work by a, a gospel that becomes infected with a gospel plus works virus variant. What does Paul say to us? He says, you fools, you've gone away from the basic gospel and started to add something else in. You're the same as the Galatians, our first mistake that so many of us make again and again. We try to fix ourselves instead of looking to our rescuer. Uh, Romans 7, chapter 12, verses 15 and verses 24. If you look them up, you'll find in verse 15 it says, Why do I do the things that I don't want to do, and I don't do the things that I do want to do? That's 15. It goes on in 24. It says, Who will rescue me from this desperate condition where my flesh is dominating where something else takes over and I just make the same mistakes the same stupid mistakes again and again who will rescue me and actually even though that keeps happening to us we go to a gospel plus works and we start trying to fix ourselves instead of believing that it's God who fixes us it's God working through us who changes us and we're going to come later on in Galatians to things like the fruit of the spirit where it talks about God's Holy Spirit working in us and how he empowers us. But just let me encourage you with one verse at the moment uh, because we maybe need that because if we stick here, we're trying to fix ourselves then Paul is still saying you fools to us. So what's the encouragement? Well, Philippians 1.7, uh, we have a promise. I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Salvation being worked out in us, us being able to overcome making the same mistakes again and again, is not us trying harder, it's God's power working in us. It's not us trying harder, it's us letting God rule more in our lives and taking his lead and not the lead of the sinful nature in us. Okay, uh, what other common mistakes might we make that make us foolish. We come up with different standards for others than we were saved by ourselves. And in a way, that's what's going on here with the letter to the Galatians. Some of the Jews were looking and saying, well, okay, um, these other people from a different background, well, maybe God's done something that they could be saved in that way. But I think they also need something else to happen. We need to see that that faith is genuine by them also working it out in that way had a conversation with work at work with somebody this week where uh, they were saying uh, that the absence of somebody made the team work better and I said hmm actually a good church always needs people who challenge the team who are disruptive uh, who seem like an utter pain in the neck because actually that person or that new person from a different background coming in teaches us to remain people who forgive easily teaches us to remain people who welcome as God welcomes and who shows grace and who wants good things for everybody from whatever background they come from who wants to see God's blessing for them. Uh, but very often if we become a church that's not used to somebody new then when somebody different comes in or different to us comes in we start expecting them to behave like us or look like us before we can believe that God blesses them where they are at we start to come up with a gospel plus. Well, others are saved by the same gospel as we are. Others, like us, will keep making mistakes, but they're saved by the same gospel as we are. It's because they are with Jesus, not because of the way they live or the way they conform. If we believe anything else, then Paul would say to us, you fools. So, uh, Chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. If we separate from the gospel that's wholly reliant on what Jesus did for us and believe anything else, then we need to go back and reset that gospel. So my final challenge to you is that we find daily routines, and we find relationships that help us enjoy the gospel. We'd be fools not to. 
but I'm also aware that that will leave some of you hanging. Maybe some of you shared things that were quite personal and quite painful as to the mistakes that you make over and over again. And let me mention uh, a very simple one. Uh, we know um, that we're about to run another uh, cab course on dealing with debt and the way we spend money and budgeting. So we might pray for Ali as she's doing that and pray for others that they would be bold to say, I keep making mistakes in this area. I need help. And they're working that out in relationship as they try and talk with somebody else in a trust environment to see how they might do that better. And for some of us in our Christian lives, it's very much the same. We might be able to work through some challenges, some struggles that we have in the fellowship of a closer praying relationship, a trusted relationship. So if there are things you want to be able to talk about with somebody, I encourage you to go to a Christian by just contacting them or phoning them, somebody that you know and have a relationship with. Uh, John's an obvious one, but any of us, and particularly those that you might have thought of at the beginning, who when they became a Christian, the change in them impressed you. Be bold, be willing to go to them and say, can you pray with me in these different areas of my life? And in case you're wondering, I'm not just saying this to somebody who's just become a Christian, but to anybody at any point in their Christian life. Often those relationships that help keep us to enjoying the gospel as a relationship with Jesus, plus nothing else. Um, those relationships we should be treasuring, those routines that keep us reading God's word and spending time with him and praying and focused on the gospel are ones that we should cherish. We'd be fools not to. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that you are our rescuer. When we're stuck in a life where we often do things we don't want to do and don't do the things that we do want to do. When we struggle to think we can ever escape from that loop we have a rescuer and we can be saved by what Jesus has done for each one of us. He's done it that we can be forgiven for our sins past, but he's also done it that we can know your spirit working in us to empower us, to transform us, to live the way that you want us to live and to make the choices that you want us to be making. Father, help us to live those lives of growing closer to you and in fellowship with you, walking with you and to not be fools by adding anything else to the gospel. We ask it in your name. Amen.